When people enter the Indian Police Service, the IPS, they are starry-eyed and they have Singham-like idealism in mind. But as days roll by and they become part of the system, their idealism wakes and wanes. And the first sign of this is when the officer begins to think in terms of what his political boss wants rather than what the law demands. I was posted as the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Bengaluru City Armed Reserve and my job was to supervise man management, personnel deployment and therefore I took stock of the situation as to where my boys had been deployed and to my utter shock I found that a number of politicians, the public representatives, the MLAs, MPs, MLCs and so on had kept gunmen in excess of the authorized number they were supposed to be. Now I made a list, there were 82 politicians who had kept about 216 gunmen in excess of the number they were entitled. I started withdrawing them. The first resistance came from my own boss who reprimanded me in front of my subordinate officers. Yet undeterred, I completed the task I withdrew till the last excess gunman came back to the unit. In the same stroke, I also removed, withdrew, eight brand new SUVs kept by the then ex-Chief Minister of Karnataka. The man had stepped down from the post of Chief Minister, yet the vehicles had continued to be with him. I withdrew the vehicles, but I often wondered why my predecessors had not acted. What prevented them from setting things right? I later learned that these are called the dirty jobs. They are unpleasant tasks, inviting the wrath of the politicians, and nobody wants to do them. Frankly speaking, I did not think of the consequences. There was no need to, because I was clear in my mind that I had acted in a manner most transparent and accountable, which every public servant is expected to. Now after this report, I was slapped a defamation suit notice. So what is the take home? If you stir hornet's nest, be prepared for all kinds of oddities and notices. So challenges therefore are manifold. Yet, if the officer is willing to take risks, if the officer has nothing to hide, if he is clear in mind that he has acted lawfully, and is fair, if he does not cling on to politicians for perks, cushy postings and so on, and last but not the least, if he has kept his bags packed ready to move out any time if transferred, then such an officer, he or she, becomes a force to reckon with. And after taking head on the mighty and powerful on several occasions, if I am alive and kicking and able to deliver a TED talk before you all, you can imagine the robust protection under law available to the bureaucrats for acts done in official capacity. And therefore, I find many of the fears of bureaucrats to be unfounded and baseless. Now, you might see that there is, it's a commonplace knowledge that the MLAs, the MPs, the MLCs, these posts are created under the Constitution of India, but one must not forget that it is under the same Constitution the All India Services, the IAS, the IPS are created. And Article 311 of the Constitution gives complete protection to the bureaucrats for acts done in official capacity and it is available to every officer in the country, including the state services. So the day the bureaucrats are able to come out of the phobia of transfers, the phobia of politicians, we will have the best bureaucracy in the world. Karl Marx once said, bureaucracy is an iron cage. But I find that our bureaucrats have chained themselves. They are the ones holding the chains. The day they break away from these self-imposed chains, the day they start exercising their real powers, we will see a new India. Thank you.